This video series is presented by Drum Tech, R Drums and Blech King. Welcome to the Acoustic to E Drums conversion series. This and the following videos are about the conversion process of a Pearl Rhythm Travel Up into an E Drum Kit. This episode is all about the wrapping. We need to remove the old wrapping first. This is pretty easy on the tom shells because they don't have air vents other than bass and snare drum. Each has a breast air vent which needs to be removed. This is only possible with a file or a grinding drill bit. It needs to be grinded until the metal ring comes off. We simply use a screwdriver to pull out the inlay. Don't use a screwdriver if you want to keep the wrapping or if you have a plain wood shell. The safest solution would be pushing the inlay through the hole from the inner side. Start heating up the wrapping at the overlap with a hot air gun. A spatula can be used to separate the wrapping. It cools down really quickly, so just heat it up again and again. The wrapping of the Rhythm Traveler is only applied for two spots with a piece of double layered adhesive tape. So it is pretty simple to remove it from the shelves. There are no glue rests. It couldn't be easier. Only getting rid of the sticky tape is not that simple. Heat and the spatula will help. Don't use any chemicals to get rid of the sticky rests on the shelf. They could destroy the wood. The bass drum hoops are wrapped with sticky tape too. There's actually a trick to get rid of the tape. Take a piece of foam rubber to not get burned and roll off the heated sticky tape. We don't use the original tom rosettes. Instead we take these Gibraltar tom mounts. The shell needs two laying upon holes to apply this mount. A vertical line right in line with the lower hole is required. The rubber blade is the pattern to mark the upper hole. We drill the hole and use a file for the precision work. The lower hole has already the right diameter. A test will prove if the mount fits. We want to mount new trick jack plugs from our drums into the air vent holes of bass and snare drum. The hole is too small. The quickest way to extend it is also using a file. The hole will be enlarged consistently. We sand the shelves to get rid of the dust and dirty spots. It is better for the mesh head if the bearing edge has no sharp edges. The wrapping foil we use is in the color called diamond gray. We measure the height of the shell and subtract a few millimeter to have a free bearing edge. The wrapping should always end up around 5 millimeter lower than the bearing edge. It is really hard to draw a straight line onto such long wrapping sheets. Therefore we improvise by building this device with a white permanent marker. It works this way. We mark the inner side of the wrapping sheet. The distance between marker and wrapping edge can be changed due to this tool clamp. It looks like a MacGyver tool, but it works perfect. The shell scope can easily be measured with a tape measure. The wrapping should be long enough to overlap itself in order of 2 cm or 1 inch. It is important to cut as accurately as possible. It might be happen that the sheet is not long enough to surround big shells like the bass drum. Therefore we need to divide the wrapping into two pieces. The small piece and the big piece. Same story for the tension hoops. We use this gel glue and the foam brush, which cannot lose hairs. We start off with a piece of around 6 inches. The wrap sheet has to be covered on every spot. We basically roll up the wrap. It would be good to use such tool clamps to secure it. This step is getting repeated a few times until the shell is fully covered.
it is really important to push out the air bubbles by using a piece of cloth or a roll. The big advantage of gel glue is that the screw holes do not have to be taped from the inside. It will most likely not happen that the glue is floating through and rinse the inner shell. It is best to not use too much glue on the very last bit, as most of it will squeeze out. The clamps will secure the wrapping until the glue has hardened. Use a paper towel to get rid of it immediately. Do not use acetone. It will remove glue, but also dissolve some kinds of plastic. We use two belts to press the wrapping to the shell. This is a great solution if your belt is long enough. As we need to apply two wrap pieces to the bass drum, it is best to start off with the small piece at the bottom. It gets applied first, as this piece will be overlapped by the bigger piece. Paper sticky tape is a perfect way to secure it. The base shell is actually a bit more tricky than the other shells. The bigger the surface is, the harder it is to wrap it properly. We had to take it off and glue it again several times. At this point it totally pays off if you have worked accurately during the cutting process. Paper sticky tape is a good securing solution for the base drum. The wrapping is done. It should dry at least for one night. You see the bearing edge is free of wrapping for the top 5mm. Now we need a drill or a similar device. The drill bit does not need to have the same size as the shell holes. We drill the holes from the inside and move the tool until the hole is extended. It is really important to not get confused and to drill the right holes for the Gibraltar clamp. The two other holes stay covered. Same for the bass drum. There will be no thumb mount, so we will not drill these holes. There is still a ridge around the holes. The grinding drill bit is the best choice to get rid of it. Careful, don't remove too much wood. A countersink will remove the edges. All those steps have to be done for every hole. That's it for this episode. If you're curious to see the end result, check out the upcoming videos of our conversion project. Click the left box to see an e-drum recording tutorial. Click the box in the middle if you want to see part 1 of this project. Or click the right box to see part 3. Thanks for watching and see you at the next episode.